you're going to need God no matter how long you've been into this thing. In this book of Mark, chapter 8, I'm reminded, amen, praise God, that Christ fed 4,000 people. And then he looks at those that were looking for signs. Then he says there is a warning now against the false doctrines of those that only want it for themselves. And as we move on, we find that there is opinions formulated about Christ. But in the verse number 34, he says, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Mm -hmm. Take up his cross and follow me. I'm going to leave this with you. Not a long message today. You ain't got to do a whole lot of turning. You can write down those little things. You already got one already in the, in the booklet, which simply says, I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Put your name there. And upon this rock I will build my church. We often formulate by simply saying, well, that happened then, but I want to talk to you about what's happening now. And the question is, it's not what you know, but who you know. And if I could tag on, I'll say, and who knows you? Not what you know, but who you know. And who knows you? You see, one thing about Peter, Peter was uh, one that didn't mind jumping out front. He'd jump out front and he would say whatever was on his mind. He, if, if, if he thought it, he said it. Oh, somebody don't hear what I'm saying. And many times you can make your mouth say a lot of things, but what's in your heart is truly what you are. Peter said, Lord, I'd never leave you. I'd never, I'd never allow them to do this to you, to take your life. I ain't going to allow that. I'm paraphrasing y'all, but guess what? I just can imagine him standing there with, you know, that brotherly talk. No, 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 this ain't happening, man. This ain't going down like that, you know. The Lord said, I'm going to Jerusalem, and they're going to, to, to scourge me. They're going to kill me, and, 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 and I'm going to have to die. You know what? Three times you're going to deny me before the cock crow. You see, that was what was in his heart. But his mouth said, no, Lord, I never leave you. Now, I'm a pastor, so y'all have to understand. I have people and I see people come and say, I never leave you, pastor. I ain't going to never You look around one day, they ain't there. Look around again, they're still not there. And so you get in a little concern, you go to check them out and see what's going on, you call them on the phone and, you know, they don't be where they ought to be. Because in their heart, they truly wasn't where they said they was. I'm with you. But they truly wasn't there. 
They was there for some other reason. But I stopped by to tell you the only reason we're here today is because of who we know. And who knows us. There's coming a day when Jesus said that he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. Sheep on the right hand, goats on the left. And there's some awful words that I hope no one in this room, you or people that you know will have to hear. Depart. For I never knew you. You see, our relationship must be so that we embrace the understanding that we must fall in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It's easy. He said, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. It's easy. But guess what? What's in our heart tend to push us in another direction. Mm -hmm. And if I could think about it, I would think about the understanding that Jonah, when Jonah uh, 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 was given a task, as many of us are, we are given a task to be a part of the ministry. What do we do? We tend to run in an opposite direction. Don't want to get too close. Don't want to be where everybody knows my name. Except in the world, in the church, I don't want everybody to know my name. But I stopped by to tell you, you got to be known. Amen. Praise God of our Lord and our Savior. He died just for you. And we got to know that we have that relationship with him that we can say, I know that I know that I know. When you know, you leave out nothing. When you know, you know that you know. Notice I gave three of them. I know the father. You don't know the father if you don't know the son. Well, I know the Father and the Son, but if you don't know the Holy Spirit, you don't know God. God is looking for people that will have a relationship with him. For he loves you more than you will ever grasp. Jesus said, I, I can tell you heavenly things, and, and, and you can't even understand earthly things. He said, so how are you going to understand heavenly things? Just obey the word of God. I'm glad that one day when I was lost in the world of sin, I had a desire. That's the first thing. You, you got to have a change of direction. I had a desire to, to, to live for the Lord, to get to know him for who he is what he is to me and what he is to those that love him. In this eighth chapter, amen, praise God. I want you to go back there real quickly. I want you to go back there. I want you to look at that again. He says in the verse number 35, for whosoever saved his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, what shall he do? And the gospel, the same shall save him. You got to get to the place where you are sorry for the things that you've done that are disobedient to the word of God. Christ is the word of God manifested in the flesh. He became flesh and dwelt amongst men. But God lets us know, amen, praise God. You need the entire God here. Right. Don't focus on just one place and just stop right there. But you got to 
you, you got to envision, amen, the father who gave the son and the son gave his life that the Holy Spirit, he sent him back here for you and I. We need a guy. We can't do it on our own. If we walk in our own shoes, we walk many times opposite of where God wants us to go. Jonah didn't want it. He didn't want those people to be saved. So instead of going where God told him to go, he ran to the other way. Got on a ship. Went away. Went to... What happened? They had to throw his little butt off the ship. And guess what? He knew he was the one. Ain't that something? Ain't nobody got to tell you. You already know. As good of a preacher as I might be, or good as a preacher as pastor may be, or in any of the ministers, amen, they don't have to tell you. So why are you waiting? Why are you not being obedient? Why are you not becoming the stone, amen, praise God, that Jesus said, Peter? Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. New providence have been carried on for over a hundred years. Why? Because they depended on God. They had a relationship with him. And the relationship is still ongoing. It's not contingent on what you do. It's contingent on what he did. And you believed him and took him at his word. You see, Peter had to take the Lord at his word. He said, upon this rock, I'm going to build a church. What was the fact? What was the fact? Why would he do that? Hmm? Because the enemy would kind of, uh, 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 of, of, of using his, his instruments and his weapons, a man fool you into believing that God is not for you. But I heard the word say of God before me, who can be against me? Well, I'm going to tell y'all right now. What shall it profit a man? He gained the whole world and do what? Lose his soul. You know, we're not, we're, we're not people that chase after wealth. But he said, wealth shall overtake you. When you're doing what God wants you to do, wealth will overtake you. And if you lose it, pray about it. David prayed when he saw, amen, praise God, that the enemy had destroyed the camp and had taken away the children and the women and took them with them. He said, Lord, shall I pursue? Do you not know that you are in a position continually to pursue the things that God has for you? Well, I'm about done. Whosoever shall be ashamed of him and his word in this adulterous and sinful generation. Can I get a witness in here? Do you agree that this is an adulterous and sinful generation which we live? There's some strange things going on. Pastor, there's some strange things going on. And I am determined to stand and hold up the bloodstained banner. You talk about aliens and all that foolishness all you want to. That's not what the Bible tells me. My Bible tells me Jesus is coming. And when he comes back, he's coming back with the holy angels and all them that have died. Amen. He's coming with them. Amen. The shout. Amen. A blast of the trumpet. And every eye is going to see. 
but you got to have a relationship. I'm reminded that they asked Jesus, Jesus, why are you doing these things? And him praying, he said, Father, I don't do it for me. I do it for them around me. <laughs> because of the relationship that we have, I know you always hear me. Can you say that today? When you pray, does it make a difference? When you minister the word of God, do people hear your words? Not necessarily to see your physical change, but to hear the truth. You see, it's not you anyway. It's not me. Even now, even preaching right now, it's not me. It's the word of God. That's what's going to do it. That's going to cause you to have a relationship with him. And if you have a relationship with him, he declare. If you are ashamed to own me before men, likewise, I'm ashamed to own you before my father, which is in heaven. So it's not what you know, it's who you know and who knows you. When I get to that gate or stand before my judge, I want to hear him say those faithful words. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. When we realize that that is the key we understand there's only two things that we need to know. When it came to the commandments, they asked Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord thy God. How? Heart. Mind. All right. Him only shall I serve. Now, you're going to serve somebody, you, whether you like it or not, or whether you confess it or not. You're serving somebody. You're either going to serve God or you're going to serve. And that's the only choice you got. You, you put it any kind of way you want, but you, you're going to either serve God or you're going to serve the devil. It's simple as that. So those words become then obey. Or disobey. When you have a relationship with anything, you have to understand. If you're going along with it, you're obeying whatever it is. If you're not agreeing with it, you are disobedient to their command. Not that it's right, but you just disobedient to it because you know what? I ain't going to do that. And I'm not going to let Satan have my soul. I look to the hill from which cometh my help. And all of my help comes from the Lord. I'm reminded that Jesus said, I always, always know that you hear me. And that's what we have to do today. We have to get to the place where we have a relationship with him. He is the one and only true God. The one that is able to take you all the way from earth to glory. Oh I wish I had somebody. You got to get to the place where you say, a child to keep I have and a God to glorify. Who gave my soul, my soul to save and fit it for the sky. Serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, man, oh. My power engaged to do my master's will. I found out he marched up Galgotha's hill just for you and I that we might have a right to the tree of life, that we might be brought back to the God that we serve. Amen. God is able to 
bring you out. Whatever you're going through, God got your back. God got your front. God got your right. And God got your left. I can tell the world, he's over me. He's beneath me. He needs me when I need him. And he comes to my rescue. Yes, I'm glad that I know him for myself. You got to have a relationship with the Lord God. You got to know that he is there when you need him. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When you call, I'll come to your rescue. I'm glad that when he went up that hill, marching from hall to hall, then he got that road and he began to go up Calvary. Tell me, every step he made, he did it for me. And when he got there, they laid him down. They nailed his hand and they nailed his feet. They took that cross between earth and hell and I. And they hold him right there from the sixth to the ninth hour. They tell me, he died. Oh, yes, he died that you might live. Come on, somebody. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. We didn't have to do it, but it did. But it didn't stop there. They took our Lord and they took our Savior, took him off the cross and laid him in a bar tomb. Lay there, first night, first day. Lay there, second night, second day. Lay there, third day, third night. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Daddy on that birthday morning, he got up uh, that we might have a right uh, to the tree of life. Uh, somebody say, yeah, I'm glad uh, that he saw with me uh, that I could be uh, a place where he would build his church. Uh, and if you like me today, uh, you know uh, that you know uh, that you know uh, I got a relationship uh, with him uh, and he know me. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Come on, give your Lord a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you. God bless you. Let me just leave this with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. You're living in a season where God, amen, has a blessing that he wants to leave with you, even though you haven't been perfect, even though you haven't did what he said. But if you've been washed in the blood, you secure your place in him. And from that point, you must continue to march forth. Because he has something for you. It's my season for grace, for favor. It is my season to reap what I It is my season for grace, for favor. It is my season to reap what I have taught. Let me just say this. I have the perfect, but I show. And I know he's able. I got a seed in the ground that he's blessing. No more blessing. I got a seed in the ground. And he's showing. And he's showing it is my season for grace. It is my sin. 